The scanning process is easy and straightforward. To start off, you can pick between easy scan, where you have to manually move around the scanner, or table scan, where the object gets turned around on the turntable. In our case, we'll go for a table scan. And then it's time to select an object that you want to scan. The mole scanner is made for medium to small sized objects. Going for small miniatures like this or objects bigger than the turntable aren't recommended for the best possible results. Next to this, also pay attention to the material of your object. Bright reflective surfaces, transparent objects and deep blacks are hard to pick up. So when working with those materials, spray something like dry shampoo on top. This way you can make those surfaces more visible for the scanner, resulting in the best scan possible. I'm going to pick this elephant and place it on top of the turntable. Inside the software, I can now press preview. Adjust the scanner angle and distance to frame up the object as good as possible. Using the distance meter on the left, we know if we are too far or too close from it. On the right of the screen, we can find some settings. The importance here are the brightness slider. This you want as high as possible without having this red color on your object, indicating that it's too bright. And the geometry and texture toggle. Geometry delivers the best results, while texture will create a texture of your object while scanning. We'll be using both of these, but first we start off with geometry. Once everything is set up and ready to be scanned, remove the object from the turntable and press initial. This step will scan the turntable only. Once that scan is finished, you can place the object back and press scan. Let it run and once it's done, you'll see a preview of what the scanner was able to pick up. To get the best result, it's good to scan your object from different angles. So flip it around and press append. And repeat this process until you have scanned your object from all possible sides. But before we use this data, we need to capture the texture too. Go back to table scan and here change the setting from geometry to texture and press scan. From experience, you don't need as many angles for the texture as we had for the geometry. Two or three should do the job depending on the complexity of your object. Now do keep in mind that this scanner has a black and white camera. If you want color, you need the color kit or you have to recolor the black and white texture yourself. But there's an easy way to do that and we'll show you later on. By now we should have all these scans so it's time to combine them. On the bottom right, make all the different scans visible. Then on top we drag our first scan into this box. Currently the viewport looks like a mess, but once we click align, their AI will automatically line up everything. It does a really good job, but if you're not satisfied with the outcome, you can always go into manual alignment to adjust. If we now go over to tools and click delete selection, we remove the turntable from the point cloud. Here you can also see if you might have missed some spots when scanning. If so, you can always add some more scans. Once you're happy with that, it's time to process the model. Here we find a few options. Fusion is going to change the point cloud to an actual model. Remove noise will remove data noise around the object. Repair will fill in the holes that you might have in your scan if you miss some places. And texture mapping will texture the model. Once those are selected, click on process and then apply. And there we go, our 3D object is finished together with its texture. Now, there might be some artifacts on the model like this right here. Simply use the selection tools to select the area and delete it. You can use these tools to clean up the model if needed. Once you're happy, go to file and press export.